IABON rates reset on May 1st this year, as they do every year, but this year there were some significant changes. What do you need to know about those changes and what actions should you think about taking? That's what we're going to talk about on today's episode of Friends Talk Financial Planning. Hi, I'm John Shearer, and I run a fee-only financial planning practice in Middleton, Wisconsin. And I'm Bridget Sullivan Morell, and I've got a family financial planning practice in Chicago, Illinois. And I'm totally psyched about talking about this, but before I do, let's talk about subscribing. It helps us. If you hit subscribe, it helps us get more viewers, helps spread the message, and helps our credibility with YouTube. Okay, so John, let's talk I-bonds right now. What are your thoughts? Why don't you give us the full report? Yeah, well, I get just a little bit of background here, Bridget, to start is, you know, every May 1st and November 1st, I-bond rates get reset. And we've been talking about those a lot on the show, right? We love I-bonds, at least recently, because the I-bond, I stands for inflation, and there's an inflation component. There's two components. There's a fixed and an inflation component, and that inflation component has been paying some significant interest the last few years, right? A couple of years ago, it was at as high as 9%. Recently, it was at about 6.5% annualized. Well, the new rates, you know, inflation's been trending down. New rates came out May 1st, and the variable or the, the inflation-based rate is now 3.4% uh, starting here as of May 1st. But the one thing that, that sort of got added in, and we talked about it on an episode here a few weeks ago, uh, that fixed component uh, had been at 0.4% and it got more than doubled. So now if you buy a new I-bond, the fixed component is 0.9%. And then that inflation component is 3.4%. So a new I-bond bought, bought today is actually paying 4.3%. So really competitive with some other things like CDs. What I think is really interesting about this and, and potentially useful is that that 0.9% is a fixed rate that is set for the life of the bond for as long as you keep it up to 30 years. And if you think about this, Bridget, it was just a couple of years ago that uh, the 10-year treasury bill was paying something around 1%, right? Where you're locking money away and, hey, we want to have a secure return and we're getting it and, and we're at 1%. Today, we have it, we're in a position where these I-bonds, we're getting you know almost 1% on a fixed rate Plus, if we have inflation going up and down again, we get an inflation component. So I think it's really compelling to at least consider for folks. Right. I really love the explanation of it because I bonds get a lot of play when inflation's high. For instance, uh, a couple of years ago when it was a the, they were paying nine percent. Okay. So then it's pretty obvious what uh what the advantage is. But this 0.9% for uh, as long as you keep it up to 30 years, that actually, because we think that interest rates will probably go down and they could, it could return to what we've seen recently with 0% inflation or maybe even a little deflation. So we, uh, so that, that's a compelling reason for these instruments. The other thing that I like about them in, in I feel like they're great for people near retirement. So it's not just about the interest rate, but it's also about a specific issue is that inflation, if inflation rises before you're retired, that can make people feel really uneasy and less, less sure of retiring because they're thinking, okay, what this uh, once I take my earnings off the table, then that means I've got to live with this stuff. And if my expenses are going up for just because of inflation, it feels good to have one investment, at least that's just tied to what's the inflation rate. And then you might get something extra too. Yeah, absolutely. I love how you describe that. And I think it's really, you know, a couple of years ago, as we started talking about this, it was sort of a no brainer decision. It's free money that's out there. We can, we've talked in the past about the restrictions, you know, you can't get to it for a year, etc. But it was like, listen, everything else is paying two or three or 4%. We're getting 9%. It's just a strategic, hey, let's, you know, there's little reason not to do it if you fit the profile. Today, it's a little bit different. Listen, I can buy a CD that's paying four or five percent, but you know, or I can buy these I bonds. It's not quite as self evident, it's not this quick hit, hey, easy money sort of a thing, but it is this strategic thing that you're talking about is where do I want to be positioned long term, 
right? If I want to have fixed income, as you're saying, hey, as you get closer to retirement, what does that what does that mean for me? And golly, I might want to have this this fixed rate that stays in effect over time. I actually looked it up as I was looking as I was thinking about our discussion today, and that the last time the fixed rate in I bonds was this high was over one percent. It was two thousand seven. Right, 16 years ago, middle of the credit crisis. So we haven't seen this fixed rate for a long time. And, and who knows, maybe November, there's a higher fixed rate. We don't know what the, the future is going to hold, right? But it certainly is appealing to think about that strategically for our, our viewers, right? For your portfolio, as you talk about, hey, as I get closer to retirement, what makes sense? I'm a little bit farther away from retirement uh, than you are. But one of the things I'm thinking about this year is, listen, I've, I've kind of got enough of the fixed income things. I don't really need to buy more I-bonds to fit my what, what my situation is. But I've got some that we bought last year and the year before and the year before that. And I'm taking a look at those right now and saying, listen, I bought those two years ago or a year ago and my fixed rate is zero. Right. So when this new rate gets set here, I'm getting 3.4% on those. Does it make sense for me to take that out, sell it, pay the taxes on the gains in there, right? And then reinvest and buy a new one. I can only do it for $10,000, right? But do I buy a new one? And I get this higher rate that strategically I'm planning to keep that for the next, you know, three, five, seven, 10 years. And I get that guaranteed rate plus whatever inflation comes in, as opposed to now just getting the inflation factor in it, right? And so I think that we need to think about, we talk a lot about on the show about, hey, if you have new money, put new money in, what, what to make those sort of decisions totally makes sense. But in a situation like where I'm sitting, where yeah, I don't really need any more in this spot, but geez, maybe I'll look to rejigger what I've done in the past and bring some of it forward to get that new rate. I think it's something that people should really think about. Right, and I one of the things I really like about I bonds is the uh, how you can decide when you want to take the tax to pay the tax on it. So, but that you know you pay the tax on it when you take the money out in that year. And so it's like okay, if I can handle paying the tax on it now, then I could um, kind of reset it so that it's going to be 0.9. If I'm especially if I'm thinking about holding on to it for the long term, like the strategy that I'm talking about, like, OK, if I'm going to hold on to this until I retire, maybe I should think about doing that. Uh, yeah, I, I really like that strategy, actually. And it 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 reminds me, as you're describing that, you know, hearing it reflected back is that so much of this is individualized to our own situation, to your own situation as a viewer, right? And, and again, I'll go back to unlike a couple of years ago, hey, if you have money in the bank and you're not going to need it for a year, you're getting a slam dunk where you're getting, you know, something in the 9% range for a period of time. Like it, it there's no uh, less strategic, more like, listen, you got extra cash. Why not get this money? Now we're talking about, well, what makes sense, you know, as, as a viewer, should I do this? Well, it sort of depends. Where are you? Do you need to put more money into fixed income or do you have things that, you, that are already in fixed income that you might like to add to I-bonds? Awesome. You can buy a new one today and get that 0.9% fixed rate plus inflation. Do you have, have some and you go, listen, I don't really need any more, but I've got these old ones. Geez, maybe that makes sense for you, right? There's so many different ways and it just depends on your taxes as you're talking about. Where's your tax situation, right? It's just different for each of us. And when you go into the U.S. Treasury Direct site, you can pick the I-bonds that you want to sell. And there's another point that we had, too, is we, you know, we don't care too much in, uh, around here about timing. But in this case, it makes sense to look at it and see when is my the last rate going to end for me? So when you buy an I-bond the interest rate starts ticking and you get that for the next six months. So if you buy the I-bond on the last day of when it was paying 9%, then you get that on the last the, for the next six months. It doesn't automatically switch like most right. accounts do. So then you'd want to look at exactly when does my higher interest rate stop and when does the lower interest rate start and wait to buy it until the new interest rate starts. Yeah, that that's a super point, and and again we've and we've discussed this on previous episodes, but in, in my personal situation, I know I bought an I bond that I bought a year ago in uh, February, right? So we we just talked about hey rates are now at three point four. Well, my rate changes to three point four percent. I bought it in February. I'm getting the six and a half percent that was for the last the last rate change. 
I get that until August, right? I get it for six months in August, my rate changes to the now current rate, which will be that 3.4%, right? So a super point, I'm not gonna look to make a change now necessarily. I'm gonna wait probably until after that rate goes down then to 3.4 to make that decision. So it's a timing thing. And I, I really appreciate bringing that up that it's not the rate changes uh, May 1st, but then it's based on your anniversary, right? Your six month anniversary from when you purchased it. So don't just rush out there and say, hey, rates went down and make a change. Your rate is likely, or at least possibly uh, still at that, you know, six plus percent, six and a half percent rate right now. So super point to make up. And I think maybe that's a good place to wrap things up here. And I'm John Shear. I run a fee-only financial planning practice in Middleton, Wisconsin. And I'm Bridget sullivan Mermel, And I've got a fee-only financial planning practice in Chicago, Illinois. John and I are both members of ACP, or the Alliance of Comprehensive Planners, which is a group of like-minded uh, planners all over the country. So if you're uh, interested in a planner, you can reach out to John or me, but if you want to find a local advisor, you can check out acplanners.org. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button.